And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I really feel like I should be smoking a pipe and should have a background of garish orange wallpaper as I show you Solitaire for Two. Doesn't this game look like it came out in the 70s? Uh, it, it really does. Even the you know, Solitaire for Two. Do, 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 do. You've just won this game. But anyhow, um, Solitaire for Two is just a very interesting game. Okay, I, I think that the title itself is a bit of a riddle wrapped in a mystery, surrounded by an enigma, a solitaire for two, for one to four players. <laughs> that still makes me laugh, okay. But solitaire is the game that everyone has played at some point in their lives, if you've ever been in an office because it was on Windows. Thank you Windows for making solitaire and Minesweeper the two games everyone in the world knows how to play. But this is a little bit different. It's based on the game Klondike, uh, which is a, a version of Solitaire. Not all versions are the same. Let's take a look at the basic things um, and then we'll be back. Here's the setup, and this setup is the same whether it's for one, two, three, or four players. Uh, in a case of two players or three players, you're supposed to sit on the same side of the table. With four players, you're really two players because you just split up in groups of two. Essentially, the game plays the same whether you're playing one or two players because, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that most people who are watching this video already know how to play Solitaire, having wasted many hours of work doing such. But there are some differences here. First of all, you'll notice that there's more than just four suits. There's not just hearts, clubs, uh, spades, and diamonds. Now there's also two green suits. We have the, the wheels and the anchors. And so when you play this game, you have six suits. There are also three tiles, and you can see the little squares there that are wild. One of them's out. It's called a joker. And a joker can be anything that you want it to be. All right. Now over here we have uh, groups of tiles that you'll be taking and you'll be taking these and trying to put one of these tiles out and then you'll discard them and they have all kinds of weird names for everything like the discard area is called the, the talon. Uh, but basically, let me just explain how this works to some degree. On your turn, you're trying to be able to get rid of all the tiles, to move them all. And you'll see that you have these tiles here that you're looking at. This is kind of your play area. And you're going to be able to bring down more tiles if you can get rid of all the tiles in a play area. For example, you're allowed to take a number. Here's a four hearts, for example. And put it underneath the number that comes right after it. In which case, here's a five. But it has to be a different color. So I could not put this three under the four because the three and the four are the same colors. But I can put the four underneath the five. In fact, I can take the five and the four and stick them underneath the six. And I can move the three down here and I can move the two over here. Um, and when I do that, I can then bring down the next, the top tile of each one up here. So by moving them around, you'll be able to get more tiles and more tiles might let you move more things around. For example, this joker here or this jack here can go underneath the queen. This 10 can go underneath the jack. Uh, here we have a king so I can move this whole queen. Jack and 10 over here underneath the king. Let's see uh, and that brings out another tile over here. That five goes under the six and now I got a I got these wilds that I can mess with so I could put this here and bring this three down here. Man, this is a good opening hand for me. I can put this nine under the 10 over here. And I still have this one here, but I don't know that I wanna use that yet. That will allow me, I'll uh, put this ace down here. And I guess now we got so many tiles out, you're gonna need a little bit of a wider view. Meanwhile, I'm looking at my my top discard and it's an ace. So I can stick that here underneath the two. And I got a five hearts, but I don't see anywhere I can put that. And so there comes a point where you can't play or move anything anymore. Uh, there will also come points where you'll take a bunch of tiles and you can move them to an empty spot. 
or you can move a king to an empty spot. But after a while, what you'll do is you can take, an, let's say, for example, I can take this ace and put it at the top, and then on top of that ace, I would put the two of spades, and then the three of spades, and the four of spades. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all the tiles here and move them up here, but I have to move the lowest one first. And in a two-player game, you can't move them up there unless, an ace up there, unless you can also move the two. Depending on how many different aces you have on the table, depends and sometimes you can move a queen to one of these positions if that helps you. You can also use these wilds in place of any tile, but when the tile that you use it in place of, for example here I'm using it as the four of, I don't know, the four of spades for example, that's what I would say. If the four of spades shows up later on, I would have to replace it with this tile. As you move tiles to the top and as you move tiles around on your turn in a two-player game, you will score points for them. And there's a whole chart on how to uh, score points. Uh, there's, a, let me show you real quick here, here's a score chart that's in the rules and that will make your mind blink a little bit. But you will be taking those, that's, how, that's what it looks like in a solitaire game. And then in a back and forth game, you just score points based on different things. Uh, here's the solitaire for two score charts. You can, as you take each tile up to the top, they're 10 points each. A trio, 25 points. Each time you cash in a joker, use a joker, 40 points. A grand sequence means you got all the, the tiles done from ace all the way up to king at one time. So there's different points that you will score. and You'll go back and forth and play multiple games if you want. The tiles themselves are of pretty good quality, you can see that they move around in the table pretty easily and they are certainly an advantage to cards. They look really good with the disadvantage of not being able to shuffle them. If I got some of the rules slightly off there, uh, what I'm explaining, it's, it's not the easiest game to explain. It's Once you know what you're doing, you, you just click through the tiles pretty quickly and the rules themselves weren't that helpful in explaining the game. I, I wish they had been written better, but they did provide me with some very high entertainment. <clears throat> Listen, uh, this is to set up. All the tiles are poured into the middle of the table and thoroughly mixed. Then. Any tiles that are face up are turned face down and the tiles are mixed again. So what's the point of mixing them the first time? I dump all the tiles and I mix them up and then I take the tiles that are face up and turn them face down. Why not do that first and then mix them up? Is there some, <laughs> it just cracks me up. That, that's just, that's. <laughs> okay, also, it tells you here when you're playing with two players, it says the players decide randomly and advance who goes first? You have to decide in advance who goes first? Exciting game ends in tie, screams a headline over here and then tells you about an exciting game that ends in a tie. You also have to knock when your turn is over. When you're playing a two-player game, you make as many moves as you can and then you knock, your turn's over and your opponent's like, aha, you missed this and does it for you. Okay, now you say, Vassal, you are not the target audience for this game. You're right, I'm not. But I don't think gamers are the target audience for this game at all. I really think this game is marketed towards people in their 60s or 70s who like these styles of things, who play bridge, who sit around. I mean, I'm, I can only assume that by the cover of the box, something that would appeal to them. And really, solitaire is not a joint function. I mean, maybe at work when you're playing solitaire on your computer and your boss comes by and instead of yelling at you, he's like, well, maybe you should move that card here, move that card there. Maybe that happens, but you don't immediately say, all right, it's your turn now. It's my turn now. It's just, I, I don't know if this game is marketed more towards just playing solitaire, in which case get a computer or play it with two people. And in which case, I don't know. It's the, the tiles are nice. The, the game, it, it's not, a, I mean, solitaire is obviously fun enough that people play it and six suits makes it interesting, but two, three, four players. No, no. I said I'm not the target audience for this game. I think there is a specific target audience, but I don't think that target audience is very big. I don't think the game's exciting. I like Solitaire, but I'll just keep playing the Windows version. Oh, wait, I have a Mac. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! Yeah.
Boo.